everyone, it's Barbara C. Phillips, founder of Nurse Practitioner, Business Owner, and Clinician Business Institute, and I'm back with another business question of the week. And the question this week is a real common one, and that is, which malpractice insurance is best? We get this question all the time, and I've often joked that I really don't know because I've never had to use one, and I'd prefer to keep it that way. But there really are some things that we can be looking at when it comes to knowing which insurances that we want to have. Now, let me also give you a little bit of disclaimer. I don't have a legal bone in my body. I am not an attorney. I'm not a legal nurse consultant. I'm not a paralegal. So you really may want to talk with an attorney and I'll give you some resources at the end of the video where you can get more information from an attorney. But I'll tell you what I've learned and who I've learned different things from. So which malpractice is best? Well, I think the first question has to come down to, do you want a occurrence based uh, claims or do you want a claims made insurance because people often ask about that and they ask about tail coverage. So let me just tell you what I understand to be the differences between the two. When you have a, a claims made policy, basically that covers you for any claims that are made while that insurance is active. Once that plan has been terminated, either perhaps it's that's what you have where you're working, or in some states, actually, they don't have both of these kinds of plans, I understand. But once you have um, ended your policy with a claims made um, policy, then what happens is you will need tail coverage because you are no longer covered. The difference, however, is occurrence, and that's really the one that you want. It will cover you whether the policy is active or not, as long as a claim is made during the time that you had that particular policy. Uh, they're a little bit more money than the claims made, but you don't have to have tail coverage. So in my opinion, I would opt for an occurrence based type of policy. And again, make sure that it's available in your state. You also want to ask some questions such as will it cover all of your activities? So many nurse practitioners these days are, they might have a family practice or an internal practice or some kind of primary care practice, but then on the side, they're doing other activities such as derm procedures or perhaps weight loss clinics or perhaps even IV therapy type clinics. You want to make sure that all of your activities are going to be covered under your plan. You do not want a plan that is not going to cover you for everything. Alternatively to that, or in addition to that, you want to make sure what isn't covered. And again, cover yourself. So look at it from the point of view of what's covered and what isn't covered. The other thing, and I think that this is really important, and this is something I picked up from a webinar with um, Melanie Balestra, I believe is how you pronounce her name. She's an NP attorney in the state of California. And one of the things that apparently is not always the case, particularly if it's a plan that is purchased by your employer, which is why you want your own plan, but can you choose your own attorney or are they just going to give you someone? And that often happens with those employer covered plans. The other thing too is with those employer um, plans, a lot of times that plan is in place to protect your employer primarily um, against any activities that you do. That's the way that I understand it. And so if that employer decides that they just want to settle a claim, and maybe that's not necessarily what you want to do, they're going to go ahead and settle that claim. So you want your own representation. Can you get it yourself. And does that representation include representing you when you go before the board of nursing? So even if somebody makes a complaint against you, um, the board, there's a, there's a claim and the board needs to know about it. You need to have representation 
for the Board of Nursing if you have to go to them. And you want to make sure that you have that in place the moment somebody wants to get some information from you that is of a legal nature. So apparently not all plans will allow, will cover you for the Board of Nursing and not all plans will allow you to choose your own attorney, but you may get one that is assigned from whoever your employer is. So bottom line, get your own coverage. So what about the different companies that are out there? Well, NSO it has been there forever. Well, all of these have been around for a very long time. NSO, I remember it from the days that I was a nursing student. That was quite a while ago. So they've been around. Now their sister company, HPSO, is Healthcare Providers. That is for those of you that are self-employed. That's where you'll get your insurance there. NSO per se doesn't cover you, but HPSO does. So Mercer is another one. And of course, if you're an AANP member, you can get a discount through them. And then CMNF Group. All of them have been around for a long time. One that I'm hearing a lot of information about is Coveras. I understand some of the plans are a little bit more cost effective than some of the others. All of our rates are, seem to be going up around the country. So again, do your own due diligence talk to people, ask questions, and find out which plan is going to vary or be best for you. And remember, they vary from state to state as far as what is, um, what's available for you and what kind of coverage and the cost and, and all of those kinds of things. Now, Again, I told you I wasn't an attorney. I would highly encourage you if you're looking for a nurse attorney, a nurse practitioner attorney, a medical type attorney, somebody who's going to understand the type of practice that you have and what you're doing, I would go to the Association of the American Nurse Attorneys, that's T-A-A-N-A dot org, and talk with them and find out, see if you can find a lawyer in your particular state. Now, many of you know Carolyn Bupert, a nurse practitioner, a retired nurse practitioner attorney. She has written on the Nurse Practitioner's Business and Legal Guide to Practice I hope I got the title exactly right there. And Carolyn is here on YouTube, has her own channel. So Google her or, or put it into your uh, search bar to get her information. I'll also put that link below. And she has some information on malpractice and what you want it to say, particularly for those of you that are employed. So Carolyn has a lot of great information on her channel, and I highly recommend that you take a look at that. So thank you so very much for taking the time to listen to this little bit longer video, but I think it's an important topic. And if you like this video, please share it. Please uh, give us a thumbs up, like the video, give us some comments below, and subscribe to our channel. And if you have a question that you would like us to address in a future video, you can certainly click one of the links below the video where I will give you access to where you can just drop it off or send me an email or even just leave it below this particular video. You can also find me at Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash nurse practitioner business and leave a question there as well. So thank you so much again for taking the time out to spend this time with me and learn a little bit about malpractice insurance. And I will see you next time for another business question of the week. Bye-bye now.